Hello and welcome to Literary Merit, the show where we tell you what media has value. Spoiler alert, it's all of it. Also, spoiler alert, we'll be discussing spoilers as usual, so here's your warning. I'm Ashley. And I'm Alex. And I'll start by asking, what's new to you, Alex? Um, I have a cold. It happened today. I can like oh, no. tra- trace back the moments when I noticed it happening. Um, yeah, it's that time of year. I'm just getting over like a friggin' three week cold. It's yeah, terrible. yeah. You didn't sound great the last time we were recording. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I've been spending the day in the past two days like so job hunting hasn't been working out. So I'm like, you know what? Let's just mm. refocus all of my or most of my efforts back into the writing thing because I know that that works. So yeah, I've been um, submitting my next uh, manuscript out to a couple places. All right. Oh man, I'm so excited. I because audience, I read it or at least. Uh, like a, a a late draft of it. I haven't read like the final draft, but it, I loved it so much, Alex. Uh, I'm so excited. I'm just I'm so my, excited uh, too. So you and the other person I had read it like totally reassured me about everything, um, <laughs> oh, except good. for the little thing, except for the little things I had to fix. But then uh-huh. today, while I was submitting stuff, I was like the um, like the feeling that it's not good enough started creeping back. <laughs> <laughs> oh no which is unavoidable you just have to sort of figure out how to like ignore it yeah well here's here's a a, a tip that i learned from uh jenna moresi she's a she's an author and she has a youtube channel about being an author she's super great um i think i may have recommended her videos to you at some point but um what she does is she collects nice things that people have said about her writing. Oh, that's smart. In like a like a folder. And yeah. so anytime she's feeling like blue, she just goes and looks at, at all these nice things people have said and then it cheers her up. Well, and I've done that too, <laughs> but I've I've never like compiled them. That's really smart. Yeah. Well, and she gets a lot of that cuz she's like a person with a big online presence and stuff so yeah. i'm sure she's got her pick of compliments but mm-hmm. uh but it seems useful for if you just need some you know emotional reassurance yeah just to <laughs> counteract the the stuff going on in your own head yeah well that's cool i'm so excited that you're submitting it i mean it's like i can't wait another year for a lot of the places that are opening up so it's like even if it might not be in its very final form yet. And it's like, you know, got to get it out We're there. We're trying. Give it a try. Yeah. No reason not to. Right? What about you? What are you up to? <laughs> oh, my God. Just wedding stuff. Yeah. Never, <laughs> never ending I saw wedding the cupcakes. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah we did uh it was we were tasting cake flavors Ooh. last night um yeah we're picking out our, our so here's a little a little um sneaky deep peek we're gonna do cupcakes instead of like a sheet cake mm-hmm, for guests mm-hmm. so uh so that'll be fun um yeah we found this great little bakery in uh in vancouver and they are so small that you can't do <laughs> tastings inside the bakery because it's basically like you walk in the front door and there is a counter and that's the whole place. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but so they just send you home. You can you can just purchase a tasting oh, box, nice. which is just like yeah. six of their like most popular flavors. And you just take it home and taste it at your leisure. And they also give you a few little um, fillings. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. It was all so delicious <laughs> until it wasn't, and now I hate cake. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, because, okay, so you're presented with multiple choices and you have cupcakes. Like, you can't just take a bite and yeah, no. that cupcake. I mean, at least. Like, that's inhuman. So there, there, that. there's, there were six cupcakes, and we each ate half of all of the cupcakes. So that yeah. only adds up to three cupcakes. Or, well, yeah, I'd say. We, yeah, but it's like. <laughs> But they're like serious cupcakes. But it's a wedding cupcake. It's their real deal <laughs> cupcake. But they're so good. This I was. We just found this place last weekend, just sort of by chance. We uh, we drove up to Vancouver to talk to a florist because my life is nothing but wedding stuff. And we were driving around town. <laughs> we drove past our venue just to you know get another peek at it. And we were over sort of. Um, near Grand and McLaughlin for your personal point of reference. 
Um, <laughs> and we drove past just this little bakery called Rosie Cakes. And I was like, that is a bakery. Let's go in. We need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like about to close. But um, we got in there. We, we ended up buying a couple of cupcakes just to see if we liked them. And we were like, yes, these yeah. are delicious. F- let's get a tasting box. <laughs> like, let's do it. <clears throat> but... No, it's really fun and, and, and it's coming together, but it's it's a it's a lot of work to have a wedding, it turns out. <laughs> Was there a standout flavor? Or lemon. a couple standout flavors? Lemon. Lemon. Ooh, we're gonna classic. mostly do lemon. Um lemon, we're gonna is, Lemon is, is is good for everybody. Like it is and it's gonna oh, complain. Man, it's so nice and lovely and light and beautiful. It's a beautiful cupcake, Alex. I guess I don't hate cake after all, <laughs> but uh, yeah. And but the one great thing about doing cupcakes is like we're not limited in flavors. Like we can just get like couple a couple more. dozen of yeah. this, couple dozen of that, and like yeah, you, you just, just have get more. A couple extra chocolate ones for people that are like chocoholics and they won't settle for anything else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, and we're probably gonna go to um, Sweet Pea Bakery, the vegan bakery in Portland, and get a dozen vegan ones just in, oh, just case. in case. That's nice. Yeah, we we've got some people who are at least sometimes vegan, and I don't know if they're vegan now, so <laughs> might as well just be safe and buy a dozen of those too. Yeah, <laughs> and they're usually good enough that even if like, oh, yeah. I mean, I'll eat they'll them. Get eaten. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They'll get eaten. <laughs> yeah. But no, it's it's exciting. I've been last night. I had dance lessons with my dad. We're taking uh, private foxtrot lessons for our father daughter dance, and it's that's very fun. Yeah, it is fun. It's gonna be really. It's it's really funny dancing with well, him that because so much more special than just like two people standing that and didn't swaying. Do any- yeah (laughs) yeah well and it's really funny dancing with him because he loves ballroom dancing he loves partner dancing but he's not very good at it oh no (laughs) like we've taken classes together uh before and like he knows it like he just has a really hard time keeping rhythm and he gets kind of mixed up in his head. And it's very sweet. And, like, he loves it. And he always wants to do it. And he loves taking dance classes. But it's just a it's a little bit more of a challenge for him. Uh, but we're getting oh, yeah. there. Mm-hmm. It, it, by the end of last <laughs> night's lesson, we were, like, we were, it was a lot smoother, I think. I think, uh, you know, we've still got a month or so to sort of get it down. And, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it sounds like so much fun. <laughs> well... Should we get into our topic? Yeah, let's get to it. So I came up with the idea. So everybody in the whole world wa- went and watched Black Panther. And everybody <laughs> in the whole world, minus two people, loved it. Um, and we didn't want to be just, you know, talking the same thing, t- same talking points that everybody else is talking about. We didn't want to, like, do a sort of recap or anything. So... And we also we, don't want to, like, move in on territory that maybe is not necessarily our place. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So. And we'll we'll probably encroach on it just because of the character we're going to be talking about. But uh, I, I felt like the villain of the movie was probably one of the most compelling characters. Not ever only in, in a movie, Marvel movie? Ever, <laughs> ever, ever, ever in, in a Marvel movie, for sure. And then coming up looking at other examples, like, also one of the most compelling villains in all of cinema history. So... Yeah, certainly in, like, blockbuster, like, action movie history. Yes, entirely. And the list that I have pulled up, let's just say he wins in every category. (laughs) (laughs) So, yes, we're talking about... So, yeah, we're going to be talking... Killmonger. Villains and Killmonger, which his only flaw is that terrible name. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> it's weird he manages to he pulls it off better than i think anyone else could oh man it, for it, sure <laughs> but like i it's I, a weird name that's that's where they lose points and i'm sure that was the, his comic name originally too and yeah no. that's that's what they're dealing with <laughs> i gotta tell you man as a sidebar so you know andy circus's character claw yeah the mm-hmm. south african fella um Later this evening, just go ahead and Google him in the comics, because oh, you're gonna want to see what he looks like in the comics. <laughs> well, I I saw him in. Uh, they did a really short run of an animated series for Black Panther a year or two or three ago, 
Um, and he was in that, but I don't remember what he looked like. And I don't, I think it was similar to the current version because it was a little more updated. Yeah, it, it, it would be memorable if he looked <laughs> like his comic book self. <laughs> well, so to try and find comparisons, not that there really are any, <laughs> to, <laughs> yeah. to, to um, Black Panther um, in terms of villainy. I found a couple lists, um, Rotten Tomatoes, 20 best superhero movie villains, and mm. um, Empire Online's greatest villains of, in, in cinema. Um, okay. So I'll just start naming a couple of them and we can talk yeah, about how just... they're not even close. <laughs> yeah, let's just let's throw some topics out. Let's um, so see where it takes let's, us. let's start with the superhero movies because that's the genre we're working in. Mm-hmm. Uh, number 20 is Bane. From The Dark Knight Rises. Mm, that's a contentious one, must say. See, I absolutely love uh, Tom Hardy as Bane. Well, yeah. And I don't think anybody doesn't. <laughs> but I don't. Well, it's the trouble with him. Is, yeah, well, the, the thing that makes those two really difficult to compare. Because honestly, as far as their sort of shtick goes, mm-hmm. they're not too dissimilar. Um, you know, they're like, I, you know, I grew up in hardship and I'm here to wreck shit. Like (laughs) I'm going to take over revolution time. Here we go. And, you know, they're both sort of military trained and, Mm -hmm. you know, embittered by the world that, you know, and they're both very good at heists in their respective films. (laughs) (laughs) But, um, the trouble is, uh, Dark Knight Rises is a convoluted mess of a <laughs> an film, empty and vacuous it really void of plot <laughs> yes well and it, it detracts from him as a villain because it's hard to take his whole thing seriously when it doesn't add up yeah you know like tom hardy plays him to oh, you know to Im- Im- immaculate action, but yeah. it's not yeah but like that doesn't take it far enough whereas black panther is one of the best structured superhero movies ever like it's definitely head and shoulders above most marvel films just as in terms of script well and also like i mean we're comparing it at least in in the when you're comparing to bane like that's also one of the most successful uh superhero franchises were the dark knight series um Mm -hmm. but again like you can't really compare them even i don't know there's just like I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> Honestly, I think that of all of the sort of superhero movie villains that come to mind, at least right now, Bane is one of the more apt yes. comparisons. On, 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 a, um, on, on like it's most just, of it's the, just that... the different factors. Uh-huh. I would say the, the one thing where uh, uh, Killmonger wins out in every respect is like his perspective and his uh his goal like and again i think that that's just a script issue with the dark knight rises yeah just that yeah bane's sort of goal is a little muddy (laughs) it's very muddy the whole movie's muddy and it doesn't make any sense and this is not necessarily an episode about how the dark knight rises doesn't make sense but that movie doesn't make sense it sure is pretty how did batman how did bruce wayne get back to gotham how'd he get in it doesn't make sense (laughs) but but it's a reasonable comparison, and I think if Bane were in a better movie, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, that it would be even more appropriate. Oh, no, what I just totally realized, Tom Hardy would have made an excellent claw. It would be a very different claw, for sure. Very different, but just, I know I mean, he can Tom Hardy would make a very can... good everything, so <laughs> I'd put him in any movie and it would work. <laughs> um, what's, uh, what's another one? Um... I'll go to some of the ones, because I don't know all of them, because some of them are either dated or they weren't really my thing. Like the villain from Rocketeer. <laughs> I don't really I don't know if I've I ever did sat not down through the whole it. Rocketeer. Um, <laughs> how about Mr. Glass, Samuel L. Jackson in Unbreakable? Huh, God, it's been forever since I've seen it Unbreakable. Has been, but I remember being like 
so impressed by that movie. Oh yeah, it's it's probably Shyamalan's best film. I don't know but if I, I don't, say that, I... but that's that's also like <laughs> I don't know if anybody could really pick <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Uh, oh man, I think that it's diminishing returns, man. I think that <laughs> I think that each one was worse than the last. So well, you go further I mean, back, I'll, I'm they're happy better. To tell you that a 2019 sequel or follow up, appropriately titled Glass, is on the way. <laughs> well, I mean, apparently, um, Split or whatever the heck it was called was a sequel to Unbreakable. Spoilers. Uh, okay. So. <laughs> Uh, it's it's insinuated that it takes place in the same universe. Okay, calm down, J.J. Abrams. <laughs> he can't. He can't. Everything's a universe now. It's, you can't even blame him because everything's a universe now because of Marvel. Uh, Marvel, what are you doing? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I don't even know how to compare those two because they're just such so different yeah. in terms of but I mean, I don't... anything that they've got going on. Yeah, I, I just think... And not, I mean... I think they can. I, like you can, Unbreakable you can compare is different them. than other superhero. Oh, completely. Films. But I think you can compare them in that. I at least as far as I remember, um, part of you when you watch the movie, you're kind of you can understand Mister Glass. Whereas a lot sure. of villains, especially I mean, in superhero movies, you're like, oh, they're just a big bad guy wanting to kill people. Like, <laughs> they don't have a goal, yeah. like an actual attainable goal that. <coughs> Ultron. <coughs> <coughs> oh, sorry. He, he is on this list. <laughs> no, get him off. He sucks. I don't okay, like Agent okay, Ultron. Next, next one. Next yeah. one is totally perfect. Okay. Mystique. Yeah, From I mean, X-Men. especially getting into like the Days of Future Past. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sort of first class stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um. Yeah, I love. I love those like x-men prequel films i think that they outshine all of the other ones <laughs> well and it's a product of the time like the original trilogy was competing against well not against because they're by the same studio but spider-man they were in the same time period the original trilogy of spider-man and that's when camp was a major factor in it still is a factor in a lot of marvel stuff but like it was well, the main thing if we're if we're gonna talk about that like I, I think that the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies are wonderful. And it's because Sam Raimi wasn't embarrassed. Oh, I love them. He wasn't embarrassed to be making a comic book movie. He was excited to be making a comic book movie. Well, and if, the, if, the if anyone X-Men remembers, movies, when they came out, they were spectacular. <laughs> yeah, and they're still good. They still hold up, man. Like, I love Tom Holland, but, like, Maguire is still great. Um, however, the X-Men movies were super embarrassed to be comic books like they like (laughs) they like really resented the fact that they were comic book movies there's a lot of animosity towards superhero comics in those films and it's it's not it's not great uh but the the later ones the 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 later ones that take place before them are much better in terms of that Mm mm-hmm yeah, no, uh, yeah, and again, and a similar sort of, I mean, that's, I think that that's just such a common background to work from for a supervillain. It's like, I'm underprivileged in some way, I am oppressed in some way, and so I'm gonna hit back really hard. Mm-hmm. And that, it's the most sympathetic way for someone to go supervillain. I mean, that's, you know, that's Magneto. Yeah, and Magneto, I would say, is probably my favorite of the superhero villains. Um, I not not always the way he's portrayed, but just in my head. <laughs> yeah, no, he's really compelling, and and honestly, um, so I, I wanted to bring up this um, uh, article from the Atlantic, mm-hmm. the tragedy of Eric Killmonger. It was kind of going around um, recently, uh-huh. came out I guess about a week ago, and um, <clears throat> maybe a little more than a week. But uh, it does compare um, Killmonger and Magneto in the way that they both sort of come out of these the these tragedies, yeah. these big historic mm-hmm. tragedies. Um, Magneto even more sort of directly, I guess, because at least in some uh, <laughs> versions of his story, he was a victim of yeah. the Holocaust. Um, 
whereas you know killmonger is you know he he was created by the you know the idea of the you know transatlantic slave trade well and all and like a product of america specifically mm-hmm. and, and, and also uh, you know I, and, and they they i think they really dance around it in the movie but isn't that time period when it was like the um i don't remember the names because i'm so bad with history but the riots in la yeah yeah the yeah. la riots um yeah that it, like in the early 90s yeah. and all so of that like absolutely th- there was a the lot going on thing, in the know? in the 90s yeah and especially in oakland um but i mean the two of them are really comparable uh in a lot of ways because they both have that sort of impulse to um sort of give them a taste of their own medicine so to Mm -hmm. speak you know they in in suffering that's 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 what this article is talking about sort of in suffering under imperialism they become imperialists yeah Yeah. and that's their downfall that's their tragedy that's that's what their flaw is is that they internalize it and decide to direct it back at their oppressors yeah yeah and one thing, I think the, the thing in my mind that separates them, though, is that Magneto can act out of character and strike someone in anger in, in the most extreme of circumstances. But I feel like Killmonger, because of the, I don't know, I don't want to say why, actually, <laughs> um, he strikes, strikes out for seemingly no reason a lot of the time. Yeah, he just straight up murders anybody. Like whenever he's just like, eh, "I'm done with you," <laughs> and then just kills him. Yeah, or like, um, I, I what really stuck with me is when he's burning the 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 flowers. Oh gosh! And he yes. just like doesn't yeah, he, he just like hit that woman or something? Yeah, he absolutely. Well, I mean, and then just burning the flowers too. That's you know, he's like, yeah. "No, no, I will have no heir. This is it. This is me. It's yeah. me now." Um, that weird sort of narcissistic impulse that he's got. Which and and that is the that's the thing that like you can see a villain in him, but what mm-hmm. really I think is shocking and really offsets his his sort of his goal, which I believe is super understandable and so much so that the hero of the story is like, yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, <laughs> is is his just cr- straight up cruelty? And that um, another bit that I, this really spoke to me in this article is. Um, the fact you know some people are trying to say that you know he's a distillation of sort of the uh, american ghetto but it's not at all because what he is is a product of the american uh military industrial complex like he he went to mit he's a trained like special ops soldier like yeah, he grew up in Oakland, but he was shaped. He was formed by the military Phys- industrial physically, complex. He has a ta- or a, a a scar for every person he killed. Yeah, he scarifies himself. <laughs> yeah. So, um yeah. and yeah, that's I mean, and I think that's where his real cruelty comes from. And I think they 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 do glaze over that a little in the movie, but I mean, they have to have a movie at the end of the day. They can't just have <laughs> exposition. <laughs> <laughs> and plus there's decades of comics yeah, but, to back it up so if we really wanted to <laughs> yeah but I, I i think that they do um i think that it's it's sort of acknowledged many times through the movie though when uh is like when they're going over hit like they're like hey this guy yeah. showed up who is mm-hmm. he and they're looking at his like background information and ross says oh, he's not wakandan he's one of ours and he's he's part of yeah. the you know united states <laughs> government like <laughs> you know he's he very explicitly says like he's he's ours he belongs to mm-hmm. the united states government well and i think also you really see and you do see uh how the military did shape him with his response to finding the weapons that they have is okay let's give them to everybody and have them just blow each other up <laughs> yeah let's just yeah. wreck the world and that uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. He he wants to turn Wakanda into yeah. an empire. Like he and in and that he's he has that great line something about the sun will never set on the Wakandan mm-hmm. empire. And that's that's just an echo of the sun will never set on the British empire. Like he's just becoming the white imperialists that, you know, 
are oppressing the people that he wants to liberate. Like he's not, he's he doesn't aspire to be better than him. He just wants to punish them. Well, and and, and watching the movie, once I realized that's what was going on in, with him, that's when you're that's when you actually start to see the differences between him and T'Challa. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. because for a lot of the movie, you're like, okay, one's doing bad things, but they like he also has a really good point and T'Challa's like got good intentions but he doesn't know what the heck he's doing (laughs) yeah and and you know he he only finds the right way through Killmonger you know he recognizes you know Killmonger does expose to him these these faults uh, and you know these sins of the past and of his ancestors and you know he can't you know maybe Killmonger is misguided but he is tapping into a truth that T'Challa didn't see before. And it's really important. Well, and that's really what uh, was really sad for me, a spoiler, when he dies at the end. Mm-hmm. Like, I wanted him to be redeemed so badly. <laughs> yeah. But in that, again, I, I just keep coming back to this article because it's... Really yeah. thoughtful and very good. Um, the, it ends talking about his uh, about Killmonger's death. Uh, it, it's talking about how, like, in contrast to other villains that in the in the Marvel franchise, he can't be. You know, he's dead now. He's he's gone. His he's cycle can't repeat anymore. He's not coming mm-hmm. back. And like his, um, it says here. Uh, on the contrary, Killmonger's ascension and death is the event that catalyzes Wakanda's redemption from its greatest failure, and his death ensures that unlike Loki, Thanos, and the Red Skull, or any of Marvel's any other of Marvel's endless stable of world conquering despots, the pathos of his tragic end cannot be infinitely repeated as farce. It wouldn't mean as much well, if yeah. he well, and also, could come back, you know? <laughs> Because of his, yeah, and well, and because he's, and it's sad to say, but because of his, his actions, he changed people's minds. So in a way, he's kind of a hero too. Yeah, well, absolutely. Like I said, he 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 catalyzed that in T'Challa. Like he he, he changed things eventually for the better. Like <laughs> he wouldn't have had them that yeah. way, but it, none of that would have been possible without him. Mm-hmm. He he inspired T'Challa. I mean, he inspired me, and I'm just like sitting there watching the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's. It, I mean, they walk a really fine line with that character. Oh, it's, like it's, he's. It's, it's it's a tightrope, and they they it's do beautiful. it beautiful. So much so that like until he started sending those weapons out, I was like, I'm I'm all team Killmonger. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. he's, he's right. very convincing up until you realize that you know he just wants to be an imperialist too <laughs> yeah because you know that's which that's i mean where he given was, his given given his life like that's how he, he was indoctrinated he just wants revenge mm-hmm. he wants revenge yeah uh do you um, have any uh, so, one else on the list you'd like to invoke yeah so one that i think is is a little bit closer than some of them oh that darn cat is scratching he, he was up here <laughs> asleep and then i let him out of the door so, assumedly ah. to go do something else, and he's scratching on the other side. All right. Um, uh, Vulture from Spider-Man Homecoming. Yes. Oh, so, he's man. sort of How like good was the, uh, I don't know, working class villain. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. He's super, he's, I mean, yeah, he's Mr. Blue Collar. Yeah, at least until he it's... actually makes money, and then he has, like, this fully glass house. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. It's very beautiful. But yeah, I mean, he was, you know, a, basically a garbage man before before he or like, um, got his hands it, on I, that I, I saw tech. him as like a, um, oh, what is it called? Like a contractor. Yeah, he, like but, but he yeah. was specifically a, a, a waste disposal contractor. Really? Okay. He was hired. He had a team that was hired to clean up the mess yeah, yeah. Okay. that got it. Got it. the Chitauri made of New York. So yeah, I mean he 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 was a garbage man. Like he was, you know, hired to clean up the wreckage, which is a big thing in and of itself conceptually. Somebody's got to do it, and that's that's <laughs> something. 
Well, yeah, I mean, that's the, the one time Marvel actually, well, not the one time, but one of the few times Marvel actually is like, oh, yeah, there's, things are bad, like, there's ramifications. Yeah, fallout <laughs> from this. Um, yeah. He, For actual people. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, there, I mean, that that's an interesting comparison. Yeah, because uh, Vulture's thing is sort of, it's, it's definitely, I believe that Killmonger believes himself to be benevolent he he is doing this to a degree out of a sense of philanthropy you know he wants to liberate people he wants to to change the world in a way that he thinks makes it better whereas vulture is really just selfishly motivated like he wants to provide for his family yeah well and and to an extent his family and his crew so it's like yeah, but he's like, I gotta get mine because of... no one's gonna give yeah. it to me. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and then it, it, of course he sort of, you know, uh, power corrupts absolutely or whatever. Like he has all this power, he ends up killing half his own men. Yeah, because he's just sick of them. And I'm just like, well, what? <laughs> and, and and that's kind of what yeah. happens with Killmonger too. Is like, sort of your your goal is only being hindered by your actions yeah it, it becomes clear that you're only hurting killmonger people. sort of imagines that on a grand scale he's acting as sort of a, a savior but he has no shame in indiscriminately murdering the people that should fall under the category of like his his kin you know he's like there are thousands yeah. millions of, well, his, of his, people like, like people us out his there. responsibility as king too yeah like he just straight up murders his girlfriend person just like <laughs> yeah and it's like whoa wait what like how does she not fall under the purview of like the people that you're supposed to be saving because he's broken in his heart <laughs> 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 stupid cat <laughs> <laughs> do you gotta do something about it no he'll stop eventually and then i'll start again it's fine okay. <laughs> um another one that's that i sort of i really like and it's probably uh close in in sort of idealism uh doc ock okay gosh Spider-Man gotta 2. gotta wind back the clock again like, yeah we're way back yeah way back <laughs> I, I i was just talking about how much i love those raimi films and now i don't remember so remind me what his sort of so he was um a scientist uh-huh. with, and he, he he was teaching peter and his thing was he was uh trying to uh invent or create um uh whatever it's called like uh fusion power yeah and he is so close so close so close and then it fails and he's like ah and then they pull all this funding or whatever and then he's like, you know what? I'm going to get back at him and I'm gonna prove him wrong. So then he's like, I'm going to weld these arms under my body. <laughs> <laughs> As you do. As you do. <laughs> um, <laughs> so he's just trying to vindicate himself, though. Yeah, and he, like, gets super close to, like, actually, you know, making it work. But, again, like, he, his sort of ambition and his revenge blinds his his humanity he's a he's a wacko and he (laughs) screws it all up one thing so i i loved that movie and i love him in that movie uh and one thing i remember watching like the behind the scenes stuff is like every one of the arms um had like a little bit different of a design to it so they could perform different functions oh man i never noticed well and then like like in in two thousand or yeah when was it 2004 you're like oh wow they actually had detail (laughs) Yeah, they thought of it. <laughs> they thought of things. Well, Sam Raimi's a good filmmaker. Yeah. I mean, there are some problems with that movie in other ways, but... Sure. But uh, it's sure. A, every movie is inherently flawed. And I think, I think actually, um, uh, Mikey from Movies with Mikey actually mentioned that in one of his recent videos. He's like, it's not a movie if it's not flawed. <laughs> yeah, it's art. It's art. Yeah. Um, you know, one that I want to uh, consider... Because I think that there's a lot of really interesting comparison um, between just the films themselves is um, Hela oh. from Thor Ragnarok. Ooh. Because both are about the effects of imperialism. Yeah, yeah. And they're both about 
um, taking your coming king, back yeah, to claim your, your throne and your your okay, birthright, okay. and they're both like, I want to take this army and do a thing and be imperialists. <laughs> um, but whereas, sort of, and, and they they are both about sort of exposing the you know the sins of your forefathers, mm-hmm. uh, but. Uh, Thor has to come to terms with the fact that, like, he comes from a line of colonialists, whereas um, T'Challa just has to come to terms with the fact that his people were not helping other people. <laughs> yeah, so you know, which I mean, smaller sins. Given but... how the world developed, is understandable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's fair. <laughs> uh, but but I do think that there is interesting thematic comparison between them because honestly, like Hela and Killmonger came from opposite ends, you know, opposite sort of sides of the fight, and ended up in the same place. Yeah. Well, and one thing, this is totally a joke, but like a lot of responses to both of them as as villains and characters, uh, I saw a lot of people on Twitter. Uh, talking about how like they make bisexuals very frustrated (laughs) i saw a lot of posts like that about both killmonger and (laughs) they're both definite hotties so a hundred percent (laughs) which i mean this is this is totally like vapid but like makes them more (laughs) more likable as people like that's why you are on their side you're like they're good looking (laughs) That's definitely a choice that's being made there. Yeah, like they're rad. They're both super rad, and you want to like them. Yeah. And it, so it helps. But I mean, that's how they sort of, especially, I think Killmonger. You know, he's he's sort of the archetypical like charismatic leader. You know, he's he's powerful and attractive and has convictions, and he makes you want to believe in what he believes, and that's how he managed to get as far as he did like i think he said i have a plan yeah. and they said okay i want to do your plan yeah and, <laughs> and i don't want to get too deep into this because i don't have the articulative skills to be able to make it right but um when you first see him and he's in the glasses and like the sort of hipster get up um like that's yeah. that's like a, good a character for him he's using what people will per- perceive of that type of person as a mask mm-hmm. to infiltrate. Yeah. Yeah, it's a costume. It's like, he's wearing a costume. We all fell for it because everybody's like, he's super hot in that scene. And we're like, yeah, we know. <laughs> yeah, he's a, no, he's a super manipulator. Absolutely. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, we're all just like, know, it, manipulate me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then Hella just doesn't even have to because she's just like, listen, I'm just going to kill you. And then you see her and you're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but but I do think that those, those movies are really fascinating to compare. Yeah, and especially definitely... since they came out in this, oh, not the same year, but within a year of each other, about but, just about. And they're, they're a couple of just the tippy toppest of the Marvel films as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and you see, it's because they gave people of color the directing helm. <laughs> huh, that's interesting that you pointed that out. I haven't thought about that. <laughs> oh my gosh, on the, totally on the same topic. Uh, so I follow Roxanne Roxanne Gay on <laughs> on Twitter, uh, and to, uh, for anyone yes. who doesn't know, she's a memoirist um, and writer. Uh, and she's amazing and I haven't finished one of her books, but I have one, um, <laughs> but, um, some people were saying, and I think she was saying that she really would love to direct, uh, Batgirl. Since Joss Whedon went and Joss Whedon did. <laughs> <laughs> but, and then I saw her post, like, obviously defending that and saying what she would do with it and all that. But then I also saw her post, she's like, oh, I just met with, um, oh, I'm totally blanking on his name, but the director of Thor Ragnarok and his wife, they're both lovely. And they're talking oh, about... Oh, yeah, Taika Waititi, Taika, yeah. And I'm just like, what a what a team. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I saw that tweet, too. I was like... Uh, <gasps> right. <laughs> oh, and then... The, I want to meet Taika I, I, Waititi. <laughs> uh, right. Um, I think uh, she also did a, a little post about, like, 
who who could be in that girl and i think somebody said janelle monet and i was like yes uh, <laughs> uh, like that would be so good that's yeah. like golden like if we're in the golden age of superhero movies that would be like the platinum age the diamond age like <laughs> <laughs> yes the titanium age <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's so good. And, but like, and it's, I mean, it's just so great that like these things are succeeding as much as they are. Because it's like, see, <laughs> see what other kinds of people can do? What other that? audiences we can oh, like, and- actually bring in yeah. as viewers? <laughs> I mean, like, a huge reason why the Fast and the Furious franchise has been so wildly successful is because it has a variety of people of color as starring characters, and it's, and you know, it, it appeals to more than just <laughs> white folks. Like, there there's, there's whole demographics that are being represented and appealed to in those films, and it matters. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, but, and we uh, talk about all the time about queer representation and begging for it um give me everybody wants representation yeah i want uh, like make a batwoman movie while you're at it lesbian superhero give it to me or like oh, finally give us our harley quinn movie with poison ivy as her girlfriend uh... <laughs> in fact just also... break all the the conventions and bring back uma thurman as her girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> no, cause see, that's a really insane version. Of <laughs> no, I know, I know. I just, I just love, I love it. <laughs> I love Uma Thurman, but no, forever the only woman that I will ever want to play—not true, but the woman I most want to play Poison Ivy, forever and always—is Christina Hendricks. I am so bad with names, as you know. I'm just gonna. Uh, she, Mad Men. You, uh, did you watch a Mad Men? Bit. I just need to look her up real quick to get her face. She's yeah. She's, she would be she's really Joan. Good. The she would be really good. Oh, I love her yeah. deeply, and she's gorgeous <laughs> and wonderful. She's got that sultry voice. She's she's Poison Ivy through and through to me. But uh, yeah, just make all kinds of different stuff. It's great. Did you see that picture? <laughs> that what picture? <laughs> <laughs> on set photo of um because apparently i didn't realize this because i knew that taika waititi was like physically uh-huh. playing korg on set um in a funny get up with a korg head on top of his head but apparently he i i saw it now I, I need to look this up and see what the accuracy of it is but i saw a photo of him in the sort of physical representation of the hulk what? that they used which is basically a big frame that goes on his body that puts a big hulk head on top of his head and then these two big giant hulk <laughs> arms that he just sort of holds like out in front of his arms and he, it just sort of huh. like takes up the space of the hulk and sort of represents the movements but he was picture <laughs> him wearing it so i don't know if he actually did the physical acting know. for the Hulk, or if he was I mean, wearing he did it? it for Korg. But, I'm seeing the like, like, like the motion yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if he did. But I saw this great picture of him, and he's sort of leaning the Hulk head down, and Chris Hemsworth is like leaning up and like giving the Hulk a smooch, and I <laughs> love it so so much. <laughs> Chris Hemsworth d- decked out as Thor. Smooch in the Hulk. It's adorable. And then it's also... It's well, if you YTT. find that picture, send it to me. I will. Because I'm having no luck. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, it just, like, came across it on, like, Tumblr or something, so... Yeah, yeah, that sounds like something Tumblr would Tumblr appreciate. loves it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, number one at the top of the Rotten Tomatoes list for superhero mm-hmm. villain... I mean, it's the obvious. Heath Ledger is the Joker um yeah sure i mean and that yeah. i don't think you can can really compare um <laughs> no and and you shouldn't and i think that there's far too i mean the thing that's so great about ledger's joker is that he's so 
singular. And it's tragic yeah. that so many have tried to imitate him because it's never worked. Mm -hmm. It's never, ever, ever, ever worked to imitate that. He did this thing and it was perfect and you can't copy it. <laughs> <laughs> like this idea of this villain that's just crazy and he just is this crazy anarchist. Like there was some magic happening, some kind of crazy alchemy that they made it work. And then like, I mean... Uh, Lex Luthor in the Zack Snyder films is just like a discount Heath Ledger Joker and it's <laughs> terrible. So let's switch over to the um, greatest villains of all, all time for all genres of film. Um, sure, let's try A lot that. of them are horror um, just because like that's... I mean mm -hmm. like you can't get past that because it's... That's where villains yeah, come from. Yeah, I mean from. they're iconic because they're, they're usually... Um, very visual because they don't have lines and they're sort of <laughs> more important than other kinds of villains yeah, because yeah. generally in a horror film it's like they are the yeah, conflict exactly. yeah. you know <laughs> i'm a big monster <laughs> i'm a conflict um, so the, the first one Watch is michael out. myers and like i don't have a lot to say because i never watched any of the halloween movies i don't think watch i think i would enjoy the, them but watch the rob zombie remake okay Watch the Rob Zombie. I mean, like, some people are going to say that's blasphemy. It, I think it's amazing. <laughs> I think it's amazing, and I love what they did with the character of Michael Myers. It's super different, but I think it's much better. Okay. Um, the original one, and it's just a very antiquated idea at this point because it was the 70s. Yeah. It, it's that, you know, he's just evil. He's just evil, and there's nothing but evil behind his eyes. <laughs> and, oh, and the doctor that's, like, trying to you know hunt him down is like ah, i can't believe that you know i i should have known this would happen like i have to get him because he's just evil everyone i'm a doctor evil exists uh yeah. <laughs> and it's just crazy it's just it's just not how people uh, work whereas the rob zombie remake decides to portray actually go in depth into the catalyzing yeah. event of him killing his family as a child and sort of show factors that may have i mean he's probably you know unwell yeah. just in his brain to begin with but sort of these factors that exacerbated it and made him snap and then this doctor trying to help him and trying to save him and feeling guilty that he couldn't save michael from himself and like he's trying to track him down and he feels this like responsibility for what's happening and he feels this pity for michael and it's much 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 better just my little my little rant about the Halloween that's franchise. Cool. Well, because one thing, well, and, and that's that's, and you know that the, the the reason that we as audience like that. I mean, that's why we all love Killmonger so much is because there's a reason. There's a reason yeah. for it all. And uh, browsing through this list, there's a lot of unreasonable villains that are just villains. Like they don't what? have any depth. And I'm like, well, well, just saying like, and I'll I'll point them out. But like, the the first list we looked through. There were some that were like, okay, they're not as good as Killmonger, but they were still good villains because they had a lot of stuff to mm -hmm. them, you know? Um, but this is like T-1000 from oh, Terminator I mean, like, to he's, uh, Freddy Krueger, Agent Smith. They're scary, but like, they're, I mean, they're... <laughs> they're scary, but they don't have a motivation. <laughs> I'm sure, I mean, let, let's not talk smack about the Matrix now. Uh... <laughs> well, okay, so Agent Smith, there is obviously a motivation, but like, as far as like the portrayal of that character we don't get from the performance the reasoning because the reasoning is it's the machines trying to purge this error basically well but, but like, smith is different than that smith smith has a personal motivation he's going rogue okay i haven't seen those movies in a long time <laughs> <laughs> well well and, um, or maybe it's just that that part isn't clear enough and that we don't get enough of a like, obviously, we do in his facial expressions because he's really good at them. You go weaving, but. <laughs> well, maybe it's maybe it's time you revisit The Matrix. I just. <laughs> maybe. Um, I've just watched that movie a lot of times. Yeah. So I know it, like, <laughs> really well. I went through a phase. I went through a Matrix phase. Uh, <laughs> well, um, one of my coworkers, um, she's been, I think, with her brother. She was rewatching all of the um wachowski films and we were doing a lot well, of talking about like how they've aged and stuff it's very interesting to go back especially to the matrix with what we know now of the <laughs> wachowskis versus our con concept of them 
at the time. And it, it frames it really differently. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. a really different movie when you think about it from a from a trans perspective. <laughs> like, yeah, from, a, from it, you know, the filmmaker, yeah. And it also from, like, their body of I mean, work um, and their sort uh-huh. of themes that have developed throughout their careers. Yeah, doing a queer reading <laughs> of The Matrix is fascinating <laughs> sure. because it's so different from sort of the cultural conception of this movie especially because it's like okay oh the, it's think the about mo- that especially the first one the the most fanboyed movie ever well and think of the irony that the most claimed term by shitty alt-right people red pill is a direct reference to a film made by two trans yeah. women <laughs> <laughs> like it's a super like you know we just weren't prepared in 1999 to read a movie that way to consider it in yeah. that way it just wasn't a thing that was going on in pop culture um but if you go back with that point of view like there's a lot of very interesting stuff going on <laughs> with that so i do recommend going back because it's just a load of fun uh don't okay. worry about the sequels <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I remember really liking the sequels, but also, like, when you're a kid, sometimes you just want to be entertained, and they're entertaining. Sure. I mean, yeah, when it was the early 2000s, we didn't know any better. <laughs> we, we, we were children. Um, but I think more to you know, to just actually get back to the topic at hand, um, T-1000, sure. Um, as far as, like, yeah, he's just, I mean, he's, he's literally just a robot. Yeah, well, and then <laughs> like there's, there's more robot. examples that are just like they're just an omnipresent danger and, and like and pal- I, I Emperor get, Palpatine. <laughs> I, ugh. I mean, <laughs> so I understand where they're coming from, and it's just an entirely different perspective than we're approaching it because we're we're looking for nuanced, complicated yes, characters. These are just like and they're iconic. looking for iconic. Yeah, iconic. You know, Memorable. maybe you know, maybe T one thousand isn't like very complicated, but damn, is he scary? Yeah. yeah. And some in in some stories, that's all the the villain needs to be. Yeah. Like that's what that story is, and it's a good story. Well, and then you know, uh, Palpatine and Sauron are also on this list, and they are the least nuanced, at least in their debuts. <laughs> yeah, Palpatine. But then there bad. are more complicated characters. We have Norman Bates on here. Great, very fascinating. Is, exactly. Um, I don't know why the Sheriff of Nottingham from Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves is on this list, but okay. Because he's played by Alan Rickman. I know, but like, isn't there another villainous role that Alan is, like... Well, yeah, like, if we're going to do Alan Rickman roles, let's just do Gruber. Like, Hans Gruber is better, right? Or or even um, uh, uh, Sweeney Todd. Ooh, yeah. Judge Turpin. Although, I don't think people... Uh, remember that movie fondly for some reason. <laughs> I could, I could talk at length about that. I mean, so I won't say anything at yeah. all. <laughs> I, think I, I better I, not let loose the floodgates. I feel you, Joanna. <laughs> Let's just say that. <laughs> <gasps> yes, not gonna talk about it. Not gonna talk about it. Another day. Oof. Oh boy, uh, and I'm a musicals person. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm literally a musicals person, so I've got um, feelings. But um, but yeah, yeah. yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, weird uh, choice. Another choice but that like... I found was really, actually, I I kind of agree with, but I think it's kind of a controversial on this list is Kylo Ren. Oh, I love Kylo Ren. He's one of my favorites. <laughs> oh. Well, especially like definitely the most recent character on this list by a long shot. Mm-hmm. Um, somebody who actually has you know, motivations and conflict within himself, which even, like, even most villains, especially, like, uh, uh, Killmonger, are not conflicted. (laughs) Yeah. He's convicted. Exactly, exactly. Whereas Kylo, it's like, he has that same sort of quality where, like, you want to believe him, but he's just, like, hurting himself. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, I could another character that I could just talk yeah. at length about because I find his 
whole thing to be so fascinating and so smart. Like, the way he's written is just... Uh, well, and, like, and, and also, I, like, and, and not just written, but, like, portrayed as well, because... Oh, sure. Adam there's Driver so much is of his, brilliant. His conflict is only in facial expressions. Mm-hmm. Like, we know what he's going through because so he's showing he's, us with his body. Well written, acted, and directed. Yeah. All around good job, fellas. But, um, I... Yeah, I mean, like, so frequently... People, people are like, Ugh, I hate Kylo Ren. He's dumb and a jerk, and he sucks. And I, and I'm like, I know, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> like, that's well, the I point. Think, <laughs> I don't want to awesome. like uh, call people out, but I think they might be projecting a little bit. Like, <laughs> they might find him annoying maybe because they can relate as a teen. Like when they were a teenager, they were much like maybe him. Maybe hitting a nerve. <laughs> yeah, exactly. maybe hitting a nerve. Well, yeah, and also their their precious you know, childhood is being affected by new changes and stuff. <laughs> yeah, and I, I mean, so certain people that I'm marrying uh, <laughs> don't like Kylo Ren very much. <laughs> um, and we've had, we've talked so much about it. <laughs> um, we've talked so much about it. Um, and I understand how he feels. And ultimately, it's just like... He doesn't like it just because it's not what he's looking yeah. for. Like, he wants a cool Darth Vader. And, you know, I think I've managed to get through to him that it's like, it's not a, it's not that Kylo Ren is a bad villain. He's just not the villain that William wants in yeah. his Star Wars movie. And it's like, okay, like, everyone's got their taste. Everyone's got their thing they like and what they want to see but what i want to see is kylo ren ruining his life (laughs) can you imagine if that this character would have either not been in the main new trilogy and had his own movie so we wouldn't have to compare it in the same way or even if this type of character were is was in his own movie i feel like we would definitely be able to as, as a collective audience be able to appreciate his nuances more I think I think maybe he would be more appealing to more people in that yeah. way, but I think that it's super significant to his character that he is so directly being compared yeah, to Darth Vader. That's true. I think if you took him yeah. out of that context, something by the would audience and by the, the by himself. <laughs> yeah, like I, I, that it's it's yeah. so crucial that it's a great it, point. he wouldn't be the same character if he was removed from that context. Yeah. Yeah, you hear that I, uh... audience? You're putting pressure on him. That's why that's why you hate him so much because he hates himself and you're an extension of his own self-loathing. <laughs> I uh, I was at the convenience store the other day. Um cuz I go to the convenience store way too often. There's a convenience store right next door to my office and I walk over there on lunch all the time. Um and I saw some cans of I think it was Red Bull, I'm not sure. Some kind of energy drink type thing. And, of course, it was Star Wars branded because everything is Star Wars now. We live in Star Wars. Uh-huh. And yeah. it had it it had Kylo Ren on it. And the flavor was Space Punch. <laughs> and I thought to myself, that's what I'd like to do to Kylo Ren. Well, and that's also what he's good at doing. <laughs> Space Punch. <laughs> um, yeah. So... I love I love Star Wars. Um, number four, number four <laughs> on the list is is Hans Gruber, as you mentioned earlier. Thank you. He's great. Um, so you're not wrong with that character. I just <laughs> forgot he was on there. What list is and this? Also, by the I've way, I've just never been a huge Die Hard fan, so yeah. The first uh, this one is, is the Empire Online best. Okay, movie Empire. Villains. Okay. Um, number three is Loki, which I don't agree with. <laughs> Man, I think he's a very uncompelling villain, even in the Avengers. I. Have a lot of thoughts on Loki too. <laughs> yeah, well, I think okay, he's, so I think I he's watched... better as a sidekick in Thor Ragnarok than any yeah, of the other. He's just gotten better movies. and better. Yeah. So he was marginally interesting in the first Thor film. Uh huh. Um, in Avengers, he was 
suitable. I mean, <laughs> the thing was, you know, that movie was about the Avengers. Yeah, not, and he can't mm-hmm. take up too much space because there's not much space for him in that film. Yeah. And that's okay. He did his he did his thing. He was in a plastic box because villains have to be in plastic boxes <laughs> now. And <laughs> ever since Silence of the Lambs, you gotta put a bad guy in a box. And uh you know, he just he did he fulfilled his function, yeah. and that's fine. That's fine for that movie. Um, now, I didn't see Thor: The Dark World until like days <laughs> before I saw Thor: I Ragnarok. Think, I think that's pretty common. I had no interest in that film. Yeah, I was. I just I didn't care at all. But then I was like, you know, I'm, I want to see Thor: Ragnarok, so like. I don't want to be lacking context. So Dylan and I wa- watched it on YouTube. We Ooh. rented it for $3 on YouTube. And we we watched it one night. And yeah, not a great film. An interesting film, though. <laughs> I'm still sort I, of... I think it has a really nice visual style. It's Yeah, it's cool looking. It's kind of fun. It's mostly just fluffy silliness. Yeah. <laughs> but you see the Thor Loki thing start to congeal in that film and that's what I mm-hmm. was enjoying. Also yeah. also little um little thing in there with the um Korg rock person that Thor smashes and that's a that's actually a callback to uh something in Planet Hulk the comic that Thor Ragnarok is sort of chomping Mm -hmm. i don't know it's not really adapted for it's loosely adapted from it's like half um yeah there's there's a there's a sort of a flashback to when korg's people tried to invade Mm -hmm. earth and got defeated by thor they like just had the bad luck of running into thor (laughs) first and he starts smashing them and they're like oh my god the people here are really strong we have to leave um and so yeah in in thor the dark world Thor smashes one of those guys up. And I was like, ah, it's that thing that happened. Um, though it ha- happened in uh, Vanaheim, not Earth. So, meh. <laughs> uh, so, but yeah, there's, I mean, there, you know, Loki's starting to turn into the thing that Loki is best as. Which is, honestly, yeah, not too dissimilar from, like, like, mythological loki yeah like he's a friend sort of and an enemy sort of and you can't trust him but you know that you can't trust him so, so maybe you, can predict him. you don't have to you can yeah like i mean and then sometimes you can't but you just sort yeah. of do your best and he's just loki and he's gonna do look he's not necessarily your enemy yeah. but he's not necessarily yeah. your friend and 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 i and i like him as that and i love him in Thor Ragnarok, but he's not the villain of that yeah. film, so he makes a much better sort of yeah. begrudging ally. Um, so the final two, um, number two is the Joker. Mm-hmm. Um, all of them apparently, for some reason, is listed as like every <laughs> one mm. of his appearances in film, which is weird. Um, but it yeah. has the picture of Heath Ledger, so obviously we know what who it's talking about. Um, yeah, I mean, other, like, I mean, Jack Nicholson's the other great, incarnations, but. <laughs> Yeah, both of the other incarnations were on the other list as well, um, yeah. separately. Whereas in here, they're sort of tied into one. Hmm. Um, and then number one is Darth Vader. Who, huh. I mean, we could sort of lump him in with somebody, not necessarily somebody who's justified, but somebody who is tortured and broken. Yeah, honestly, and... especially if we're talking like a Ridge Tridge, uh, <laughs> as we like to call them. Do we call it that? Uh, yeah, we've said that <laughs> in the past. A ridge tridge. Uh, a ridge tridge. I'm sure we called them that. <laughs> but I he love functions it. much more. He, he functions much more like uh, like Sauron in those films. Yeah. You know, he's mm-hmm. just the scary the big end, yeah. bad guy yeah. who's coming to get you. Like that's what he was. When I think he's just like an evil I guy. Think... People that's love fine. that, and that's one of the reasons they didn't like learning more about him. But then also, they also kind of love the redemption at the end, too. So, <sighs> Yeah, he's, he's, it's just the problem is that, that the prequels spot, were badly written and badly acted, so... <laughs> well, did you watch Mikey's new series about the Star Wars movies? Yes. Okay. I did, and that could be a whole <laughs> conversation. Well, I'm just like... Uh, 
when they happened, mm -hmm. things were different. <laughs> sure, sure. I, I know Mikey's absolutely right about everything that he says <laughs> in those films. They're still not good. <laughs> like, the acting is still terrible. The acting is still terrible and the dialogue is still terrible. So, like, yeah, conceptually, he has redeemed them for me. But if you go and you watch them, they Oh, suck. I would fast forward through most of it and just watch, like, the, the space fights and the sword and the lightsaber battles. Sure. Watch, watch the lightsaber battle with... Uh, Darth Maul, you can basically skip the entire first movie up until that, yeah. the lightsaber <laughs> fight with Darth Maul. Because that's, I'd say that's probably the second best lightsaber fight yeah. in and then the franchise. For... The best, the best is Kylo Ren and Rey teaming okay, up. Okay. That's the best lightsaber fight. I would rank, <laughs> I would rank <laughs> the first lightsaber battle. No, not the first. I would, I would say the, the, the first, well, just because it's the first time you see one. The first time in, you see it. In A New Hope. It's the worst. At the very beginning. It's so bad. It's horrible, but it's it's like the first time, so it's something special about it. But anyway, I would say <laughs> I, I, I can agree with those those as your first two, and then I would say the uh, the duel in Empire at the end would be the third. Sure. Fair. Now we just went way off, to, off topic with lightsaber <laughs> yeah. and Star Wars. But yeah, so Darth Vader, I understand, especially when you're talking about just like sort of impact on cinema oh, history. Yeah. Like, yeah, Darth Vader is super influential, super important, super iconic. Like, well, yeah, and he has know, the same like it, it, the same crazy. horror movie imposing, physical, visually iconic, um, lumbering. You know, he has all of that. And he's and that scene you know, at the else. end of Rogue One is the scariest thing I've ever seen put <laughs> have to you, film. Have you seen the version? And we, I think we've talked about this. Have you seen the version of where it's put to um, <laughs> "Give Me More" by Britney Spears? <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't seen that. It's oh, so that's good. good. It's just that's like good. oh no, my god. However, look I have for that seen... immediately after this because that is hilarious. I have seen the beginning of the Kylo Ren and Rey team up fight um set to britney spears toxic yep. and that's mm -hmm. very good yep <laughs> <laughs> oh What's and i think i might have sent it Star Wars? I, I, might, I might have sent it to you but it was uh um it was that final fight on the bridge uh of thor ragnarok set to toxic as well instead of to right. uh, immigrant song <laughs> yeah oh, man i love thor ragnarok i really do it so comes I've been out, thinking recently. Uh, next, or no? Uh, it's already out on digital, but I don't remember the day it comes out. For yeah, physical. I've got I've got definitely a handful of Blu-rays that I need to buy. Uh, I gotta buy Coco for one. That's my new fave. I want to see it so bad. I might just rent it so I don't have to like pay twenty <sighs> bucks to buy it. Yeah, I mean, you're probably gonna want to buy it once you <laughs> rent it, but go I ahead just, and I would know, buy waste every movie. <laughs> I would buy every movie and not have and not like I would prefer to own a movie rather than uh, rent uh -huh. it, but I just don't have the funds. <laughs> See, I I'm a compulsive collector of yeah. movies. I've got I've got so many oh, movies. It's just a thing. I I inherited it from my mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll buy a movie That's even if do. I haven't seen it yet, and I don't know if I'll like it. Like. I bought oh, really? that stupid King Arthur movie. <laughs> <laughs> I've got that one too. It's stupid. Uh, um, but yeah, no, red box it or something. You won't regret it. It's it's just lovely. It's I, wonderful. I wanna, I've I've heard nothing but amazing things. So yeah, in fact, like when you do, because I, I think it's about to come out, or maybe it just came out on video. It just came I, out, I would yeah, love Tuesday. Yeah, I would love to talk about it and compare it to other Pixar oh, yeah, movies. I think that it. that is a great episode, and we'll do it. <laughs> we'll do that one. <laughs> um, but I was talking about something else. Mm. Uh, we were doing Star Wars, but I think we're I think we're pretty good on our villains conversation. Yeah, I, I'm I mean, sure we are. We went through. I'm the big sure ones. we are. I'm sure what I was gonna say is not interesting nor important. But if any listener has any suggestions to compare to Killmonger or just to talk about other villains. Yeah, who do you like? Who do you hate? Are we crazy? Are we right? What do you think? Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't have to be a superhero villain. It doesn't have to be like a like a traditional villain. It can just be like an antagonist in a movie. Um Yeah, sure. Yeah. It's great. Let's let's get a conversation started. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to talk to you. Go ahead and tweet at us and 
you know, whatever. <laughs> comment. There's YouTube comments. We also post on YouTube, so you can comment there if you want to. Or leave us an iTunes review. That's a thing. That would be just great. I'd love it if you did that. Do you, Alex, have any recommendations this I was episode? just about to ask you the same thing. Let me pull up my podcast app on my phone to see if there's oh. anything new in here. Cool. cool. Oh, um, so I, I listened to it previously, um, but I just actually subscribed. It's called um, Commonplace, um, and it's hmm. uh, Conversations with Poets and Other People. Um, it's um, uh, hosted by... Rachel Zucker and it's awesome. I'm learning a lot about not only different poets specifically, but it's really fun to listen to, especially if I'm like in the mood to write poetry, but I don't know what to start with. It'll like give me some like discussion topics to mull over my head. And it's just really, really cool. Mm. Especially when you're out of academia and you don't really have conversations about poetry very often. Ugh. It's just yeah. really nice to like sit and listen to people talk about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cool. What about you? Um, I... Okay, first, I gotta... Did I mention... I can't remember if I had talked about it or not. The podcast Tales? Yes, you had mentioned it. Okay, yeah, that's what I mentioned last week with the Parcast podcast. Yeah, Tales is great. Listen to everything that they do. Parcast is awesome. Um, but just this week... Tannis season four kicked off and my heart is happy. I don't know if you remember back, gosh, nearing a year ago now because you realize we've been doing this for almost a year. <laughs> I know it's crazy. But back at that time, I was really, really into this podcast Tannis. Um, I had just found it and I blazed through it um it's a it's a fiction sort of um masquerading as nonfiction podcast mm -hmm. supernatural mysteries good times real spooky and good um and season four just started um the first episode is up and it's a doozy but if you're interested in that do not start with season four <laughs> go to the beginning you have to you have to listen to it from the beginning otherwise you're going to be super lost, um, but it's good and you'll enjoy it and, and do that also. Um, but secondary um, recommendation is I just found this YouTuber who I believe is called Big Joel. <laughs> <laughs> and he does sort of um, video essays. You know, he's one of those guys that we of the sort that we yeah. love that does mm -hmm. video essays about like movies and stuff. Um, he's started doing some about Disney films, which you know is my <laughs> jam. Uh, he he talked he did a video on Snow White and sort of how it functions, and a video on Bambi and oh, what starting it's from the beginning. about. And those movies, <laughs> yeah, nobody thinks about Snow White, and especially not Bambi. So really interesting stuff. Check this dude out because he's uh he's I I I hadn't found him before, but I'm I'm glad I did. Um. One more thing that sort of I just remembered. Um, yeah. So since we're talking about um, Black Panther and how it's, uh, you know, run and cast and got all people of color in it, black people. Um, another show that I finally sat down and started watching is Insecure on HBO. Mm. Um, which is just like absolutely hysterical. It's so funny. And I and I knew it was gonna be and I and people on Twitter were just like ranting and raving when it first premiered and I'm like I finally sat down and started watching it and it's so amazing. Amazing every part of it. Funny, beautifully lit, beautifully shot, beautifully acted. It's just good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I've heard it. It it looks great. I I don't like watch shows anymore so <laughs> i should but i just ne i rarely do that anymore well if somebody's looking uh, for uh, a comedy with a little more substance than like big bang theory or something <laughs> um <laughs> and they have access to hbo i would recommend it oh it's on hbo yeah so yeah, not everybody yeah. can get it but like steal your parents password or something not you specifically but anyone out there whose parents yeah. Can't I, afford HBO. I like do me. steal all my dad's passwords, 
Oh yeah. I do steal oh, my yeah. dad's passwords, but he does not <laughs> subscribe to HBO, so unfortunately. Shame. That does it for today's episode. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to us on YouTube if you absolutely love us. And like the video if you just kind of like us. You can also find us on iTunes, Google Play, and Anchor.fm. Please rate and subscribe so more nerds can find us. Check us out on Twitter at LitMeritPod for updates and news. And we also have our own uh, personal Twitters, which you can shout us out at if you feel so inclined. I am at that jackanapes. And I'm at King with no name, all one word. <laughs> I think Twitter handles all are. I don't know. I know they are, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I just clarified because I said it like there were big spaces between each word. <laughs> You're just, you're just being articulate. Just All called right. me out. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks to Jonathan Colton for the use of our theme song, Fraud, from his album, Artificial Heart. Until next time, remember, no, no guilty, guilty pleasures. pleasures.